What are your most valuable KPIs? I own a Christmas and landscape company and I struggle to identify what KPIs to track. What can you control? You can control your leads. So you got to get at attribution for your marketing, right? Zach, you got to know your numbers with the leads that are coming in and are those converting into jobs and how much is that job average ticket? So is there a conversion problem with your technician? Is there an average ticket problem? Is there a call center problem? Are you answering all the forms? What I would really look at too is for a Christmas light is drive time, landscaping, pools, pest control. I want to make sure to start hitting as much in one neighborhood as possible. So I spend more to acquire a customer in the areas where I have less drive time. And I also focus on the right neighborhoods. One of the biggest KPIs of Christmas lights is how long is the customer staying with us? Because if you got a business at seven years, you only lost 20% of the clients, maybe they moved or you can put the reasons why they stopped. You got a business that's sellable. So pay attention to those KPIs. How do you feel about SEO? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, there was a guy that I worked with for a long time. He worked for me. He was the head of my market. I brought him back as a contractor now because he's a busy guy and we're paying him lots and lots of money for SEO or link building for content creation. But now it's completely different. There's chat GPT, there's pictures, there's Upwork, there's other ideas. We're basically building out all kinds of things for content portals. I'm going to build each and every person within the company into a market and they're going to get an employee generated lead and they're going to make money even when they don't run the calls. I love Google. It's helped build the business, but I don't want to be reliant only on one marketing source. I love SEO. I think it's so important. I think having a great website with a lot of education, getting it to match your wraps to match your billboards. I think you just got to figure out how to keep things implemented properly and have checks and balances. How do I scale my business from one employee to five in terms of finances and when to hire a manager? Even when I was still in the field, I'll manage five employees. I think the great thing about hiring, you know, five employees, I'd want to still be in the field building the training manuals and still making sure that my top couple guys got it down to the best process. Their numbers are amazing. And if I'm beating them, then I'm gonna work with them. If they're beating me, then I'm gonna study. So I think that's important. And then start to build manuals and start to get great people to help you out in your financing. I'd get a, uh, a really advanced bookkeeper at five employees. I probably wouldn't be screwing around with payroll. I'd hire a company for a few hundred bucks a month. I probably wouldn't be screwing around with HR things. I'd be focused on marketing. I think that's the one thing that's taken us to where we are is I think we've out-marketed a lot of people, but not only marketing, but we marketed for great people. What types of systems should we have that will help our company grow? Business is about creating systems. It's not about doing the work. It's about creating systems around things. You know, most people don't have a business in the sense 89% or something of people are less than three employees that have businesses. I don't really consider those businesses. Yes, you have an LLC and you have an EIN number. A business works when you're sleeping. A business works when you don't go to work. I don't know the Webster dictionary of business, but a business in my definition says, if I don't show up for a month, it's still running and it's still successful, which is a hierarchy of systems and the way communication flows. And there's checks and balances for everything. Systems should be everything from the manuals to the checklist, to the standard operating procedures, to how you drive your truck, to how you check the truck each week, to make sure there's no issues with it, tire pressure, windshield cracks. The systems get built by mistakes and to rejoice in people's mistakes is a good culture to have because then you can build a system and a standard operating procedure about so it. So many owners get mad, but it keeps happening over and over. The definition of insanity is doing it over. So they allow themselves to get chaotic at business and they allow their doors to get open and just their time to get hijacked. And then they wonder, literally they wonder, they go, why can't I get anything done? It's pretty vanilla. Keep an eye on your numbers. You retrain, constantly retrain. You constantly are creating systems within the business and great things keep happening. I'm in the process of acquiring an alternative heating company, but it needs an entire cultural makeover. How would you go about taking over leadership and doing a 180 on culture without losing the employees? First of all, it's about the first day you meet them and the dinner and taking them bowling and saying, we're gonna invest in you and you guys are gonna win. And first, I wanna sit down with each and every one of you and hear your ideas. Now, hopefully you have a team to help with. And I wanna know what was going good. What did you hate the most? What can we do better? You need to start giving people money to come up with ideas. And it's gonna cost you some money, but you need to say, listen, guys we're gonna sit down and think about your dreams and we're gonna build a custom plan for you to hit your dreams and i know that if your dream comes true i promise you i'm gonna be rejoicing because when your scorecard's good i'm making money when you're buying houses we're making money. like if you can't build a place where you love and you expect people to want your business to succeed that's crazy so start showing up and caring people know i live a busy life but i'm here every day as a one-year-old handyman business looking to grow, what steps did you take in the beginning for funding? Personal credit, business credit. This is important, personal credit. You're gonna have to need a couple credit cards and 
Run them up. Don't pay them up every month. Pay a little bit more than your payment. You got to build credit, right? Then there's for professional business credit, you're going to do Duns and Bradstreet. You're going to figure out what it's going to take to build business credit. You're going to have to get with your vendors. You're going to have to have bank letters. You're going to want to build that side of the credit. What I would also do just from a handyman perspective is don't do everything in the house. You say, here's the 10 things we do and set up vendors that you can get all this stuff for and prefer price. And yes, if you're going to do something above and beyond, charge the right price because I find it hard to be efficient at everything. If I'm doing all locks and installing fans and installing a garage door opener, I would actually probably say these are the 10 norms let me do all this work and anything else make a list and i'd say i charge a differently hourly rate and i'd actually you know believe it or not i charge more for things i'm not proficient out because i'd be losing money if i didn't so without further ado i appreciate you guys make your businesses great enjoy your relationships quality time delegate properly and make it a great day